So the original title for this talk was Who Interprets, but uh, I've shifted it slightly to Technical Becoming um, because I, I found what I, while writing the paper, what I really wanted to talk about was not hermeneutics, but techniques. Um, so in this essay, I will read two contemporaneous texts, Helmut Lachenmann's Pression for Solo Cello and Gerhard Mantel's Cello Technique, Principles and Forms of Movement, both published in 1972. Gerhard Mantel, the principal cellist of the WDR Symphony in Cologne and a cello professor in Frankfurt, had little to do with Lachenmann and other composers emerging from Darmstadt in the 1950s. Mantel's position as a pedagogue and performer within the establishment of classical music makes him a non-existent entity in Lachenmann's accounts of music in the latter half of the 20th century. If anything, in Lachenmann's mind, Mantel would belong to the bourgeois philharmonic aesthetic which Lachemann explicitly designates as a power to be resisted. Similarly, Mansell, who performed and taught mainly music of the canonical romantic repertoire, would likely have viewed Lachemann as a reactionary kook. Behind these two texts, published in the same year, are wildly different understandings of the European musical tradition, of its history and trajectory, to the point that the two practices, performance and composition, would appear at the same time complementary and totally autonomous. And yet, rather than arguing that composition is simply ahead of performance, or that performers not devoted to contemporary music are in some way regressive, rather than arguing that the musical work is an outmoded category and that we should view composition as a postmodern performative practice, I will read similar tendencies within the two texts in question, Lachemann's composition, Christian, and Mantel's cello treatise. Both are expositions of what I will call technical becoming a term synthesized from readings of Deleuze and Guattari. Technical becoming guards against the alternate abstraction and reification of technique as either knowledge apprehended by the positive sciences or as simply the means of production for a bourgeois aesthetic of music. The meeting of these two practices of performance and composition and technical becoming presents an opportunity to revisit the history of this division of labor, a project entirely beyond the scope of this presentation. However, I would like to hint at the possibility of reconciliation in praxis, starting with the critical affirmation of technique. I will, then, I will begin by contextualizing technical becoming within the philosophy of Deleuze before reading its exposition in Lachemann and Mantel's texts. The question arises, what is technique? Manifestations of technique would include the various instantiations of the body's forms and movements. Technique, however, is not present it is not an appendage. It is not coextensive with the material body or the psychological subject. Technique works as a structuring entity, an invisible force which plays across the body. I argue that technique should be spoken in terms of technical becoming, not being. In Nietzsche and philosophy, Deleuze affirms the derivation of being from becoming. Return is the being of that which becomes. Return is the being of becoming itself, the being which is affirmed in becoming." End quote. Deleuze posits that the very nature of being is contingent upon multiple returns of becoming, becoming as the movement that resists ontological determinism. Technique is not, in the sense that it cannot be thought of as equivalent, as being assigned mathematical value, as consisting of measurable equalities. Rather, technique guides the measuring body, it is by means of the technical that the body becomes empirical. To the extent that technique is measured or classified, it is as one particular manifestation, one instance of its return, one revolution of its cyclical reappearances. To confuse technique with its manifestations is to, be, is to confuse becoming with being. When technical becoming is reified as being, technique is identified merely as a means of producing art. The technical is a force that molds the very figure of the human. As an object of study, it inevitably modifies the observing subject, shaping the template of the body as it guides thought and action. Template is a term I use, also operant as technical becoming. The template guides musical writing as technique guides the body. But the template refers to things given as situated objects to technique. For example, the template of the musical score the template of the instrument, the template of the human body. Technique plays around the template, 
but the template itself is not coextensive with its objects any more than the technique is coextensive with its manifestations. From the beginning of Passion, Lachenmann plays around with the template of the musical score, replacing the traditional bass clef with a diagram of the cello on the left hand of the cellist. The similarity to tablature notation comes to mind in that writing is instrument specific. However, unlike tablature, the directions are continuous, not discrete, designating movements of the body across the instrument rather than positions. As Lachemann writes in the preface, quote, the notation of this piece does not indicate the sounds of the player's actions, end quote. Additionally, his notation designates independent functions for the left and right hands. In the opening, the bow is drawn along the bridge while the left hand, notated along the fingerboard part of the clef, sweeps up and down in a metrically determined manner. I'll just play a brief clip. First, many of us saw this last night, so hopefully uh, that's fresh in our memories. Um, so Lachenmann's notation involves a deterritorialization of the instrumental body and its standardized technique, an emphasis on the shifting, becoming movements and functions of the body, rather than the abstract, abstracted entities of pitch values. There are no expressive markings, there is no recourse to affect. Technique is thus never reified as merely instrumental to a preconceived notion of the aesthetic. Lachenmann's notation maintains more rigor and precision because it denies ontologically determined standards of technique. This is characteristic of technical becoming, in that writing and the body are more accurate, more empirical for resisting the equation of technique with the measured values of its manifestations. The sweeping of the left hand along the strings, the tapping of the bow on surfaces of the cello, are not merely deconstructing standardized notions of technique. The cello clef and the separated notation of left and right hand are not merely deconstructing standardized notational objects. In themselves, in their novelty, these sounds do not represent their coming. Rather, Lachenmann takes as object the technique of the cellist. This object, which he understands in its difficult relationship with presence, demands transformations in the template of the score. Lachenmann's responsive technique measures the indeterminate, the not yet, rather than employing pre-existing equivalences. His notation both conceals and reveals technical becoming, of which each sonic or notational revolution, each dialectical synthesis of terms, is a mere approximation. The new sounds and movements are metered, accurately notated in the same manner as those that came before them. The measuring of the not yet dissolves and redevelops form. That everything recurs is the closest, closest approximation of a world of becoming to a world of being. The reconciliation of two divergent practices, composition and performance, nominally operating within the same musical domain, enacts a reorientation of ontological and epistemological assumptions. It enacts the affirmation of music as itself an exponent of the philosophical as explicit in Adorno's title, The Philosophy of New Music. This reconciliation turns on the question of the shift as a technical operation. Gerhard Mantel gives his account of the cellist's shifting motion in his technical treatise. He writes, the acceleration of the left arm needs to be great enough that the main part of the movement will consist of the tossing 
phase, which requires no energy, end quote. The tossing phase refers to the motion of the left arm as it shifts from one note to another along the fingerboard. According to Mottl, this toss requires less energy, keeping the arm muscles loose and thereby increasing the accuracy of the motion. The word toss indicates the controlled indeterminacy of the motion, its reliance on chance. What is this toss, this necessary chance operation, but a repetition of difference, the movement of return, being of becoming? This toss is the Nietzschean dice throw. Rets, it is not that a large number of throws produced the repetition of the combination, but rather the number of the combination which produces the repetition of the dice throw. The dice which are thrown once are the affirmation of chance. The combination which they form on falling is the affirmation of necessity. Necessity is affirmed of chance in exactly the sense that being is affirmed of the coming. End quote. The combination formed by the dice is thus secondary to the throw. The numbering of the dice creates homogeneity, the operation of numbers and qualities. The repetition of the dice given by numbers does not describe chance, but rather retrospectively marks it, just as being marks becoming in its various returns. If one were to measure the optimal speed of each shift, to create a necessity and anticipation of each movement, the performer would not be able to play. It is with the performative language of the toss or the dice throw that the performer begins to accept chance and indeed to affirm it as necessary. Just as Lachemann refuses to conflate reified, affective manifestations of the technical with technical becoming, Mansell refuses to conflate control and accuracy, the necessity of the statistical and the probabilistic. In this manner, Mansell's descriptions of technical movements resemble Deleuze and Guattari's description of nomad science. I quote, this science is characterized less by the absence of equations than by the very different role they play. Instead of being good forms absolutely that organize matter, they are generated as forces of thrust by the material in a qualitative calculus of the optimum. End quote. Mantel introduces knowledge about the body, but a knowledge that follows the indeterminate forces of the technical body's programmed action. Rather than utilizing methodologies of normal science which measure and assign values, Mansell understands the technical body as an empirical tool. He operates within a bodily calculus. Mansell is ambivalent about the position of performance in relation to the musical. He writes, quote, in many cases, the anticipatory movement of the chalice is independent of the musical proceedings. This procedure presupposes an important ability, in fact, the key to a virtuoso technique namely the ability to deal simultaneously with two time levels." End quote. The existence of multiple time levels in a performance indicates that in addition to the metered plane of the musical score, there is a mode of activity independent and yet codependent from and with the musical proceedings, that is, the anticip anticipatory movement of the performing body. Mansell's ambivalence about the relation of performance to music matches Lachemann's. Lachenmann writes, if someone says to me that what I do is not music, I say wonderful. Finally, we have not music. The whole world is full of so-called music, end quote. There is on both ends, performance and composition, an acknowledgement of the necessity for practice to resist accumulated meanings of the word music. Thus, the technical function of the shift becomes not only phenomenal, but also semiotic. The signified of music shifts underneath its signifier. The contingencies of practice and technical becoming push against the signifying word that would reify such contingencies. Language thus becomes not simply about music, but a performative negotiation of its very terms. Gerard Mantel's writing on technique can be thought of as a critical reinterpretation of the body, affecting and indeed becoming part of the technical assemblage. What Mantel sketches in his book is a template of the body into the template manifest in Lachemann's score, Pression. Lachemann's clef, which includes part of the cello and the performing body, finds its analog and diagrams within Mansell's book. There they are, side by side. These two contemporaneous texts, one largely verbal, the other largely notational, both take as their object the technique of the cellist. 
whereas Lachenmann sets himself the explicit task of continuing a compositional style of resistance to a bourgeois aesthetic for music. Mantel's resistance may be read as implicit in the language of his treatise. That is, Mantel seeks a language commensurate with his shifting object, technique. Such a language does not seek to apprehend the technical, but rather performs and approximates its becoming movements. Where the two projects meet is at the boundaries of the musical, at the point in which the very identity of their practices as music is brought into question. In Lachenmann's case, this is accomplished through deterritorializing the instrument and its standard technical procedures. For Montel, this is apparent in his didactic treatment of the performing body, in his account of virtuosity as premised on an independence from the musical proceedings. I suggest that the writing of Montel and Lachemann posits an alternative practice, praxis in which the histories and trajectories of performance and composition are reconciled in the movement of technical becoming. Such a praxis would involve the continuation and development of a critical language commensurate with the shifting object of technique, resisting the language of technical mastery or interpretive fidelity as it reinforces a repetitive economy of musical works and performances. Instead, a praxis of technical becoming and its various rehearsals would draw attention to the discourse of the performer and composer rather than treating the performance of the musical work as the ultimate event of meaning production. In this manner, we begin to see the division of labor between performance and composition, not as a relationship of subordination or specialization, but rather as a unified negotiation of musical identity. Thank you very much for an excellent presentation. I'm always happy to see Lachenmann in these discussions because uh, many years ago I, I always saw a connection between Deleuze and Lachenmann. Uh, Lachenmann refuses this. And, uh, <laughs> he, never told me, he never told me directly, but I think he's a bit offended with me that I wrote an article, 2011, a long article on Deleuze and Lachenmann and encountered. So I'm very happy, and I'm particularly happy that he brought Mantel into the picture, which is, I think, a very interesting addition to this discussion. It might help to bridge the two fields. Uh, so thank you. I open to the floor. If there are any questions, should be some comments, remarks. Yes. Uh, Chris. First of all, thank you very much. I really enjoyed your presentation. Uh, I had a couple of ideas here. Um, I was wondering if you had ever encountered Simon Don, uh, because his ideas. He talks a lot about using tools in a way that you might find resonance with musical technique. Uh, but my main question is really trying to understand the difference between the sort of technical becoming and the machinic becoming that we see in the loose Notari sometimes. Um, because they seem very similar, but maybe with different intentions. And I was hoping you might say a few words. Sure. Um, well, first of all, I should qualify this answer uh, by saying that I'm no expert on those in the theory. Um, but, the, I mean, the reason I focus on technique is that Within the discourse of, uh, within the common language, I think of performance, performance and composition, uh, within the sort of classical music, uh, there's often this division made between technique and interpretation, techniques and hermeneutics. And for me, that division uh, is detrimental in that it, it it subjects technique, it makes technique only a means to an end, a means for producing art, a means of production. And that's why I focus on technical becoming rather than machining becoming. Thank you very much. Yes. Well, thank you for your presentation. It's really wonderful also to see a, a, a piece of the score of Pressure, because I know the piece well, but I've never seen the score. It's very interesting that he uses this as a clef, and at the same time, it's very, well, it seems very logical to do so. But I was wondering about um, um, your notion of technical becoming and, and the kind of music, well, um, hopefully uh, Machemang will allow us to call it, still call it music, that is, that is produced, because if I, if I listen, especially of course if I look at it, but if I listen to the piece as well, it, there's also a kind of, an, an other kind of becoming that, for me at least, becomes a permanent kind of, a, a, let's say, a, a bodily becoming, in other words, the music becoming body, and of course if you see it, then it's, extremely obvious that, that, that the body is so intrinsically involved in musical production, of course, as it is in all musical production, as long as it doesn't 
involve a, a, a pure computer music. But I think here there's some kind of foregrounding of the fact that music is always already also a bodily activity. So is that something that's, um, uh, that, that you could um, um, comment on, the, the, the notion of bodily becoming, if that's a word at all? Yeah, I, I mean, I would agree uh, that, I mean, he explicitly sort of uh, models notation on the body. Except I would uh, also point out that this notion of becoming doesn't simply take uh, the body as its object. Mm -hmm. Lakaman doesn't simply take the body as its object. He takes technique as its object. And technique has a difficult relationship with the body and with presence. Because you know technique is not presently there. It's not an appendage that you can grab and, and point to. It's only manifest in its, it only manifests itself. Um, and so in that sense, I would be, uh, I would be hesitant to simply say there's a connection between Lachman and the body. I think it's, I think it goes beyond, beyond. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it was also into the body of the instrument, because I think that's very crucial to Lachman, the, the, the energy that is in the instrument and that you have to extract uh, even independent, I mean, you need the body to extract it, but it's it's in there. It, that's one of his claims, and so mm -hmm. that's why he, he looks for other techniques and other ways of playing the instrument. So that right. this other potential, other virtualities that are there and were not explored before, that finally we find ways to extract it. So uh, the body has to relearn the instrument, has to relearn how to approach this instrument. How to pro I mean, we have a cellist here, so she knows perfectly well. Uh, so this this I think is very important. The the the, the non-human uh, body is also very relevant mm -hmm. for Lachman. Yeah. Maybe to reinforce the idea that every Deleuzian concept is connected to every other Deleuzian concept. <laughs> to bring these two papers together a little bit is uh, another way to think about technique in the way that Lachman might be thinking about technique is technique is a way of developing the affective capacity between the performer and the instrument. So really foregrounding those kinds of notions. Well, we are about to close. I think th that was a very interesting panel. And uh, bringing together the three, I think it's really, uh, we are at that point. I mean, you talked about this relation between the, the, the instrument and the body. You talk about fluxus right, a lot, this, the, this moment like the surfer, you know, on the wave mm -hmm. and defining where to go. And in your presentation, you started a big uh, word, tonality. And this word is crucial to Lachenmann. And there, he wrote a lot, and uh, he gives it a very particular technical sense which I think could be very helpful for your investigations, future investigations, because it's a word loaded with uh, history, and Lachman is very clear where this started, where this finishes, and what can we do to play with it or against it. So I think from all the three presentations, we really <coughs> learned a lot about these relations to the music. Thank you so much. We will continue now in the Sphinx cinema. Follow the map, or follow me, or follow someone from the office <laughs> staff. Maybe since they're following me, uh, it's yeah, fixing. Where? It's close to McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>